physiology. Today I'm going to be taking you through our uh, shoulder and ankle exam. Um, again, practice it. Your test will be Friday. Uh, Serena, my wife, is going to help me, so she'll come out here. Just have a seat right here. We're going to start with the shoulder exam, but both exams you're going to start by telling me four things. First, a brief history. You're going to say uh, what happened, where does it hurt, what makes it hurt. And then the fourth thing is simply you're going to tell me that you'll observe both sides for any kind of asymmetry. Once you do that for the shoulder, um, you're going to start with palpation. So I'm going to come right here at the clavicles near the sternum. Okay. Typically we do it bilateral, both sides, but if you want to do it one side for the sake of this test, that's fine. But we're going to come out the clavicles and I'm going to roll out the clavicles all the way until I get to this little depression here, the AC joint and I'm going to palpate that AC joint for any kind of tenderness. Once I do that, I'm going to come straight forward okay, to the greater tubercle. Once I find the greater tubercle, if I simply go in a little bit, I'll feel a little groove there with the biceps tendon in it. Sometimes it is helpful to externally rotate the arm a little bit and you'll feel that biceps tendon even cleaner. So I'm going to palpate the biceps tendon. It's a real common place for tendonitis. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to extend the shoulder all the way back and I'll feel a little spongy area and that is the bursa. And again, you'll have a lot of people who come in with bursitis. Okay. Once you do that, you've completed your palpation. After palpation, we're going to do a, uh, an active range of motion. Active range of motion means that the patient is doing it. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to instruct them how to do it. I can't give them the terms because they don't know what abduction is. So I'm going to ask them to do it for me. So Serena, can you lift your arms out to the side? Good. And put them back down to your side. Can you take them forward like this for me? And bring them back. Good. With your elbows at your side, can you roll your arms in? And take your arms out. And can you swing your arms in circles for me now? Excellent. Thank you. Once you do that, I'm not going to have you do an, a passive range of motion for every range on the shoulder. I'm simply going to tell you that they had pain on one of the ranges of motion. In this case, I'll say they had pain in external rotation. Once I tell you they have pain in a range of motion, you're going to repeat that range of motion, but this time you're going to do it for them. We're going to do a passive range of motion. So I'm going to tell them to relax. Just relax your shoulder. Relax your shoulder. I like to have a hand on the shoulder so I can feel it to see if there's any popping or grinding while I do it. And I'm taking it through that range of motion that caused pain. Now, I'll give you two scenarios. If they had pain on active and pain on passive, that means it was somewhere in the capsule. Okay? It was either capsular <coughs> or ligamentous. If they had pain on active but did not have pain on passive, when I was doing it, then they have either a muscle or a tendon problem. Okay, some kind of issue with that. Uh, once we've done uh, our palpation, our active, our passive range of motion, the only thing we have left is to muscle test. So I'm going to strength test real quick for the supraspinatus. I'm going to hold them down at the side. I'm going to say, push your arms out for me. Excellent. With their arms up, hold them there for me. I'm going to push down. Now with their arms still up, I'm going to say, pull your arms down to your side for me. Good. Arms right here. I'm going to check pec major by pushing into the uh, biceps. Excellent. And arms at your side. Push out against my hands and push in against my hands. Good. <coughs> and we're doing that to reinforce the assessment you did on the palpation, active, and passive range of motion. Once you're done with that, you're done with your shoulder exam. Now, if you draw ankle exam, your ankle exam will start off with the same four things. You're going to tell me first, you're going to tell them you would ask, um, what happened? Where does it hurt? What makes it hurt? And then you're going to tell me you would simply observe both ankles so that you can look for any kind of um, asymmetry, anomalies, anything like that. Once you do that, you're going to start off with palpation. So if you could slide back a little bit for me. And for the 
the sake of this exam, you can leave their shoe on. Of course, if you're doing this in real life, you wouldn't have your shoe on. Uh, I don't really care which side you start at. You can start medial, you can start lateral. But you're going to roll right under the malleolus. So I'm going to palpate just under the edge of the malleolus. And in this case, I'm doing the lateral malleolus. I'm going to come across the front of the ankle, and this is the talotibular junction. And then I'm going to palpate down under the medial malleolus. Once I do that, I'm going to squeeze the Achilles tendon, work my way down through it, all the way to the top of the calcaneus. So I'm going all the way around the ankle in four segments. Once I do that, I'm going to do four ranges of motion. I'm going to do this three different times. Okay? First, I'm going to do it actively with them moving in these ranges of motion. So, Serena, can you pull your toes to your shin for me? Can you push your toes down? Can you roll your ankle in? And can you roll your ankle out? Excellent. Active range of motion. Now on the ankle, I am going to have you do all four <coughs> passive ranges of motion. And the reason why is I want you to feel that end gap and see if there's any kind of gapping and see if there's any kind of pain associated with it. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to tell them to relax and you're going to do those same four ranges of motion. So I'm going to press their toes to their shin. I'm going to pull their toes down. I'm going to support the ankle here and I'm going to rotate their foot out. I'm going to rotate their foot in. Good. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and do anterior and posterior drawer sign. Think of it just like the drawer in your dresser. Okay, anterior drawer sign. I'm going to hold my hand on the top of their tibia. The other hand is going to go under the bottom of their ankle, and I'm just going to pull their foot straight forward. Again, I'm feeling for any kind of gapping from torn or, or strained uh, ligaments or muscles and they could have some pain there. Usually with the anterior drawer sign, it would be pain from damage to the anterior um, structure of the ankle. Once I do anterior drawer sign, I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna do posterior drawer sign. I support under the back of the tibia. I grab the forefoot here, and I push straight down into the ankle joint. Feeling for the same thing. I'm feeling for gapping, um, any kind of pain or tenderness, and usually that'll be due to the posterior structure of the ankle, okay? So now I've done my active range of motion, I've done my passive range of motion, I've done my two drawer signs. I'm going to give you the same two questions. They had pain on both active and passive range of motion. I'm typically thinking capsular or ligament. They had pain on um, active but did not have pain on passive. I am thinking that it's muscle or tendon issue. Once you're complete with that, we're going to muscle test. And again, we're doing the same four planes. So I'm going to put a hand on top of her foot, and I'm going to ask her to pull her toes up for me. Good. Hand on the bottom of the foot, have her push her toes down. I'm going to hold on to the ankle and try to prevent this, and I'm going to ask her to turn her ankle in for me. Good. And push your ankle out. Once she's done with that, I'm going to use that information to, uh, to correlate and, and reinforce what I thought from my palpation, my active and my passive, and I've completed my ankle exam. So... Uh, review this film. Hopefully this makes it a little easier for you guys, and good luck. Thank you.